The Gold House is back with the best NFL rookies at that quarter mark of the 2024 NFL season. Put together some rankings for you guys once again here. Lad McConkey listed as 185 by the Chargers. I don't, I'm thinking he doesn't weigh that, but it makes it that much more impressive uh, how much of a beast he is, and he's definitely making the list today. Let's take a look. Coming in at number 10, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, rookie running back from Oregon, Bucky Irving, who's starting to take some snaps and carries away from Rashad White. It's a good running back duo they have there. Irving plays way bigger than his size. He's su super explosive, way faster than any 40 time people were concerned about on the field. So it's been very exciting to watch him and that duo in Tampa Bay, and that offense is uh, excelling right now. Number nine is Chargers rookie receiver from Georgia, Lad McConkey. Another good game this week against the Chiefs in week one. He played very well and made the list. Back on it after this week. Pretty consistent with getting separations. Got reliable hands. Battle between him and Quinton Johnson. Of course, they're not battling each other. But who, who the top receiver for the Chargers uh, is. And they're both very young and going to continue to improve. So exciting times for LA. Sticking with the Chargers here. Number 8, Joe Alt, who missed last week's game. If it wasn't for that, he'd probably be higher on the list. But we're judging off you know, four games so far. We're at the quarter mark. So... Yeah, missing one game is going to hurt you a little bit, but uh, when he has played, which is most of the games so far, he has been very, very solid and playing against some of the top pass rushers uh, in the game. was a little better the first couple weeks than the TJ Watt outing. Kind of makes sense, though, uh, but uh, a bright future here for not just Joe Alt, but looks like the Chargers. They got two rookies in a row on the list four weeks in and heading into week five. Number seven is going to be the Raiders rookie tight end, Brock Bauer. So another Georgia Bulldog making the list. He had an off week last week which against the Browns, which is a little surprising because Devo no Devonta Adams, which is a receiver, but still targets taken away from him. And Michael Mayer, who is the second tight end, the tight end duo with Brock Bauer. So I thought he'd be a lot more active. Felt like the Browns had a good game plan for kind of keeping him in check, but maybe not everyone else. But was pretty consistent leading up to that. He's built up a pretty good uh, resume through you know most of the weeks to still be on the list and be that matchup factor that we expected him to be. Number six is Tennessee Titans rookie D tackle Tavondre Sweat, who made the list after week one, back on it after his outstanding outing against the Dolphins in Monday Night Football. He was not only one of the he was the best rookie in week four, but he might have been one of the best defenders in all of the NFL in week four. Absolutely dominant disruptor. You have to double team him. You absolutely have, and he still might win. So he's a unique player. I was a huge fan out of him out of Texas, so I'm excited about him right now. But yeah, Titans definitely got one in sweat. He is once again. Uh, on this list here heading into week five. Back-to-back -back Titans here. Number five, their rookie tackle, J.C. Latham, has been very consistent, very solid for them. A lot of people didn't like that pick, was surprised about that because I, I actually loved it. Was very solid in his career to Alabama, and now he looks pretty solid for Tennessee. Well, he stands out in pass protection and running run blocking, but run blocking lately is where he's standing out. When the Titans follow him in the run game with Spears or Pollard or Spears, good things happen there. So he makes the list once again. We got two Titans, two Chargers, two Titans on the list. Lots of receivers, more to talk about, including number four in the Jaguars rookie receiver, Brian Thomas Jr. Been another guy that's been super consistent, productive every single week. He's playing well enough to be number one, but there's some legit guys. The top four really separate themselves. And those Titans guys are right there with them as well. But another outstanding outing against a good secondary in the Texans. Uh, and he and Lawrence even missed him for a deep touchdown that would have been, I mean, he would have been insanely productive then. He looks like, we keep talking about, he looks like a polished veteran, which maybe he's, even though everyone knew he was good, maybe wasn't expected. So he's been awesome, legit receiver prospect, one to watch right now and for the future for Jacksonville. Number three, Cardinals receiver Marvin Harrison Jr., who's continuing to be on the list. He only wasn't on the list after week one and a disappointing outing, but great since then. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. actually has a little more yardage. Marvin Harrison Jr. been racking up the touchdowns, found the end zone once again. It was a disappointing game for the Cardinals, but uh, you know he was still standing out. Thought he was a little you know more open than kind of wrecking uh, real people realized as well. Maybe Kyler Murray realized he doesn't, didn't have a lot of time back there, but. Um, yeah, it feels like he's going to continue to get better as well. So yet another rookie receiver, this one coming in at number three. And we have a 1A, 1B situation. 1B or number two being Malik Neighbors. It's it was, it's tough to move him down after a ridiculously good outing against the Cowboys. He is the Giants offense like we expected. Uh, number one, Jaden Daniels is just playing out of his mind as well. We talked about it. It could possibly turn into a C.J. Stroud versus Puka Nakua situation where it's two number ones and they're going to be back and forth all year. And it feels like we 
we have that right now. Malik Neighbors, again, he is the Giants offense. He's supposed to miss this week's game most likely, so that we'll see the, the difference without him. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully he gets healthy soon because he has been, I mean, outstanding is it doesn't even, you know, sum it up. It, he's been incredible for the New York football Giants. And number one is the Commanders rookie quarterback, Jaden Daniels. And, again, tough na- to split up Neighbors and Daniels. It really feels like Stroud and Puka from last year, but... Daniels, he's doing some unreal things right now. And again, it feels like the Commanders have that franchise quarterback. I know it's early, but it looks pretty good. I'd like to see him play a little tougher defenses. He'll play those teams coming up, those defenses coming up. It'll be a good test. I'm confident with him. The stats are great. The, the dual threat numbers, everything's great. But I think the impact, what he's doing on the field, and he's improving every week, what he's doing on the field is turning into wins. Specifically, the best thing about the Commanders right now, what stands out the most, I, I think keeping plays alive, and then turning third downs into first downs, even even converting fourth downs. So not only keeping plays alive, keeping drives alive, scoring points, winning games. So I think Daniels is the most responsible for that with his legs. And that was the difference between the first couple weeks. First couple weeks, escape pressure, put his eyes down and run. Don't love that, even if it ends up being a scoring drive. Next couple weeks, the last couple weeks, escaping pressure, being a pass first guy and making big plays with the air and on the ground when it's absolutely necessary. So been awesome. And Man, it is so, and that's a big reason he's won because it's it's so rare for a rookie quarterback to look like this. And it sounds funny because C.J. Stroud just did it last year, but it's so rare. Even though we got it two years in a row, it is super rare. And you look at the league right now, how even veteran quarterbacks are struggling and how these passing attacks are struggling, teams turning more towards the run. It proves that it is even harder to play the position now more than ever, you know, in the NFL, the quarterback position. I mean, even see Patrick Mahomes struggling a little bit, and he'll be fine. But So it is unreal what Stroud did last year and what Jaden Daniels is doing in this early season right now, and that makes it even more unique, in, in my opinion. So special sight to see again. Neighbors, Daniels both feel like number one, and you got a couple of those receivers, uh, you know, right behind the other receivers behind those guys as well. But... Um, yeah, Daniels very much, and, and the commander is very much impressive. And there's a recap of your top 10 in the movement because we've been updating this every single week. Is We'll see if we make this, every, you know, continue making this every week. It's definitely going to pop up, if not, uh, throughout the year. Some other videos we want to sprinkle in there as well. we got loads of content predicting every single week. But you see some guys that just missed it. Xavier Worthy uh, end up scoring another touchdown last week. Zach Frazier's been pretty good for the Sears. Lot 2 is creeping back up two weeks in a row, almost squeezing in the top 10. Uh, verse versus getting production. Uh, he's now people were complaining that he didn't make the list last week. He's missing a lot of tackles and it's not the end of the world. I'm still giving We're only talking about 10, just 10 out of all the rookies and the production's good. He's getting after the quarterback. He's up at the you know tied at the top for missed tackles. Again, not the end of the world. Doesn't decide who he is, but it's kind of rare to see an edge rusher up there. So be a little more efficient in terms of those tackles. And then you can get up there. And then Fuaga, who, who we've seen on the list as well. And there's more good rookies than just that. But it's we're kind of picking out the select few as of right now. So uh, about halfway through the year, we kind of could regrade. I always do at the end of the year, regrade the first round. Uh, but we always have you covered with number a number of videos covering the NFL every single week. So subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss any of it. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.